Hello there and thank you so much for keeping us company. Why in the morning is the show and the Y254 TV is what uh, the station. Now it's about time we talk about internet and we are looking into the uh, journey to Lodwa where fiber cables were laid connecting the northeastern part of Kenya to the rest of the world. Like I had mentioned earlier, internet and technology has made the world to be a global village. To what benefit uh, does this bring to the people of uh, northeastern part of Kenya remember for a very long time they have been marginalized in terms of infrastructure development uh, even the way of living they have been so much behind but of course that has been an assumption to someone who has not been there like I am like myself so the people in studio with me uh, they will tell us whether it's true those people are marginalized how the situation is on those particular areas I'm speaking to David Odiambo senior manager and transport IP planning with Safaricom and Paul Barasa. He's also a project manager. Uh, apparently, we couldn't make it to have uh, the a connection to Peter and Jay here, who is in Trukana. Uh, he's the area sales manager there, uh, but we may get to have him uh, during the conversation as we move on. But for now, these are the people in studio with me. They will tell us and they will help us to understand of what benefit it is uh, for us to be all connected regardless of where we are and what does that bring especially to the young people uh, in terms of a business opportunity and so much on keep it y254 send us all your comments to all our social media platforms at y254 channel on facebook and instagram and twitter as well my handle is at morani hillary and my name is dereva hillary welcome to the broadcast good morning gentlemen good morning <laughs> I must say it's a great honor to have you here. Um, in a way, I was calling you people uh, the three musketeers of technology in good faith because uh, now you are the people who have brought light, we could say. I saw your story um, and it was amazing to understand that you took part in helping the people of Northeastern Kenya to be connected to the world. But uh, before even we get to much details, I would want to hear briefly, I'll begin with you, David, briefly, how was the journey, considering we were uh, during the pandemic, or in the pandemic, uh, there were restrictions of movement, there were night curfews, mm -hmm. how did that impact your working? Thank you, Mr. Hillary and the viewers. Uh, it's quite a very interesting project, uh, starting from the onset. Trukana, as you know, is on the northern part of the country. Mm -hmm. Very marginalized. It's one of the largest county in, actually the largest county in Kenya. It's about 68,000 square kilometer, mm -hmm. which is like 100 times of what Nairobi is. But the population is almost just a quarter of what Nairobi is, about 1 million. Mm -hmm. As much as Nairobi is almost 4.2 million. Mm -hmm. Trukana do not have good roads. So accessibility is quite a big issue. And any time that you go there, people struggle, you see them struggling to meet ends. Mm -hmm. And most of them are struggling with their cattle, trying to get water and so forth. Mm -hmm. So going through that journey and just seeing people, how they are trying to connect and also be part of the country has actually been a challenge over a period of time. And we've been there quite a lot of time. They complained to us that this is Nairobi. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Sorry. You people are from Nairobi as we are from another country. Mm -hmm. This has really been quite a challenge over a period of time. But as a company, we said, no, let's transform the way Trukana people are. Let's work a little bit harder and ensure that at least they are able to also keep on going mm -hmm. and communicate the same way the rest of the country communicating. Mm -hmm. That was the base of the project. <coughs> so we worked harder with the rest of the team and the rest of management, of which we got the blessing to ensure that we can go ahead and open up Trukana mm -hmm. by extending fiber connectivity, which was the last county. Today, uh, Trukana by around November was the only county in this country that has not been connected by fiber. Mm -hmm. So we tried as much as possible as a business to look at what's available, though it cannot make commercial sense, but we can actually be able to transform the life, life line of people, lifestyle of people in Trukana area and also keep them going. And that is actually the mantle that drew us to go to that area. So as we went there, going through, navigating through a lot of challenges, some starting from curfew, you go there with the team, they are blocked there. Mm -hmm. Residents searching for jobs, it's very hot, you still have to meet the timeline, you have to balance between the community, stakeholder requirement, and also people looking at you that 
At the end of the day, you are you going to mobilize because there's a curfew? What are you going to do? Mm -hmm. But we managed to come up with a lot of ways to help us to ensure that we navigate through, which is part of the conversation that we'll actually want to have with you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, uh, Paul, yes. uh, how, how about you? How, how was the journey? How was the experience up there? Uh, thank you, Hilary. Okay. Uh, Drukana County is, uh, in terms of climate, it's very hot. Mm -hmm. And uh, when, we went to, when we went to the ground to deploy, we had the, we had the locals who wanted to work. Mm -hmm. And uh, the locals could not appreciate that uh, this kind of work, mm -hmm you are to have a, a specific way of how you're supposed to, to put on mm -hmm. the PPE. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they could just come with their civilian clothes mm -hmm. and they wanted to be in the trenches mm -hmm. to work. And then there are specifications for project deployment. Specifications are you need to excavate at least for that type of soil structure, mm -hmm. you're supposed to excavate at least 1.5. 1. 1. Mm -hmm. So that when the flash floods come and the rains come, at least they do not get to the, to the infrastructure. You mean 1.5 deep? Deep, yes. Okay. 1.5 deep mm -hmm. and 0. 0.4. Mm -hmm. And you can imagine people have never done that work before. Mm -hmm. So it was quite a challenge to make them understand mm -hmm. that number one, you have to go to that depth. Number two, you need protective clothing to be able to work. Mm -hmm. And now we, because we had designed the project in such a way that uh, we wanted to mechanize the project so that we move a bit fast. Mm -hmm. So we had that particular challenge from the locals. And then uh, there's, uh, there's something else that uh, we encountered over there. We had never been in a situation where we have, uh, you're working and suddenly we have flash floods. Oh, okay. Now it has changed from being hot. Yes. Uh -huh. it, 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 there are two, the, we have the, the extremes of the weather. Okay. Okay. So we have a situation where you're working and suddenly the water comes. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the things that we had to tell our people, mm -hmm. you have to watch out on the weather. Mm -hmm. You could be walking around here and suddenly you just see what, it's not raining where you are, mm -hmm. but suddenly you see water coming. From because it is raining on the upstream, oh. very far from the upstream. Okay. Yes. So I could say, uh, in terms of challenges, we had a bit of challenges with the Tukana, but uh, we thank God we were able to, to manage. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, speaking of marginalization, uh, you have just even mentioned that, mm -hmm. and in terms of skills, mm -hmm. these are things that we are told by maybe say, politicians or people who have been there like you have been. Mm -hmm. Now, are they that really marginalized in terms even of uh, level of education in terms of skills uh, like we have we have the government has brought about things to do with TVET are these people that marginalized that we need to be cautious of David thank you Hilary uh, the situation is uh, dire to the extent that uh, you go there and majority of people you meet are during the school during the days when people are meant to be kids are meant to be school mm -hmm. you see them herding cattle and you see people sitting in small barazas, meaning that firstly, there's no source of income for those who are in the age that they can actually be able to do meaningful jobs. Mm -hmm. You see them some sitting across just uh, small barazas, chit chatting, and it is during the normal working hours. Mm -hmm. And for the small kids, you see them chasing cattle left, right, and center. So the question is, what, when do they get opportunity to go to school? Okay. Yes, and then you can see mothers struggling with jerry cans of water going long distances to search for water because again water is a big challenge in that area mm. flash flood can come but water is coming from a very long distance that is why they are flash flood and they actually have to travel long and then you just get to know that water has arrived but mm. in terms of access to that water mm -hmm. and clean water is not there as a completely mm -hmm. so those are some of the challenges that you meet and then you realize no wonder they always say you guys are from kenya as we are 
from Trukana. Oh. And that divide, divide is quite, quite significant when you go there. Mm -hmm. And the way they actually view things, and for them the basic thing that they just want is just to see that they also get to be part of the country. Okay. And that's why when you work with them, you realize the divide is so big, and because the country, so the county is also quite big, it's 100 times Nairobi. Mm -hmm. With the resources that we've had, like oil and so forth, which needs to be tapped, but we need to make interventions so that we also open that place mm -hmm. and also pull our people along with us so that they can also receive meaningful education and also trying to get access to opportunities just similar to the same way somebody in Nairobi can. Mm -hmm. And that's the time they actually be feel that they are also being lifted to the level that is required. Mm -hmm. So today as it is, they have got challenges unique to northern Kenya. Unique in terms of infrastructure, unique in terms of access to quality, mm -hmm. livelihood, and social welfare systems. Mm -hmm. And those are some of the challenges that you meet while you're going there. Mm -hmm. And that's why for us, if we can continue to work with these communities as part of shared values to ensure that we can raise them mm -hmm. to the level that they can also access similar resources across the country, we know that we're going to make a difference in their life. True. And that for us is a big thing. All right. Thank you. Now, to, 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 to a greater length, you could say that is what inspired you people to yes. um, help them be connected. And like you mentioned, they are mm -hmm. the last people maybe uh, to have now internet in the country. Mm -hmm. But now, uh, Paul, with them being marginalized or the region being marginalized, I know they are as smart guys, they are as smart people there. They now have internet. How do you think this is going to benefit them? Uh, thank you, Hilary. First, to pick it up from uh, what David said about the marginalization, mm -hmm. when we went to the ground, actually, the issue of roads, it is from, from, from Lokicha mm -hmm. all the way to, to Lodwa. Mm -hmm. That section of the road, when we went there for surveys, was bare earth. You were just to struggle to find the road. Mm -hmm. But now, later on, during the project execution, mm -hmm. we have seen that uh, the roads have been given out to, to contractors. So the sections of the roads are being done. Mm -hmm. So that's number one, marginalization in terms of uh, transport. Number two, in terms of uh, communication, was a big challenge. Mm -hmm. Communication barrier, the language? Uh, or connectivity. Oh, okay. We are talking about the connectivity. Mm -hmm. And that's why a Safaricom we transform lives. Mm -hmm. We decided that despite, the, despite it not making a lot of economic sense, mm -hmm. we decided that we have to move in. Right. Yes. Uh, in terms of how this connectivity can, can transform, the transform lives of the people of Turkana, mm -hmm. we are saying that the, the, you can look at it in two ways. Number one, there is uh, social improvement. Mm -hmm. People can communicate better now. You can make a call, you can place a call from here to Trukana, mm -hmm. and you get, uh, because there's a lot of capacity now we've opened up. Mm -hmm. Because fiber has a lot of capacity. You can be able to make your calls to Trukana, the people there. So, so the social aspect, we can say, has really improved. Mm -hmm. Recently, the governor himself said that uh, some few years, some few years down the line, mm -hmm. Connectivity was 7%. Right now, as we speak, we are at 70%. Mm -hmm. And it's because of now the, because of this particular project. Right. We are now at 70%. Mm -hmm. You can talk about uh, economic transformation. Because now, in terms of uh, you doing your business, you can, because now you can be able to communicate well. Right. In some places, you could not, in some times back, you could not be able to do it. Mm -hmm. So people there can be able to communicate well. In terms of youth, the youth there can be able to start generating, uh, gen uh, starting to develop content because they can push it into, the, into YouTube. Mm -hmm. Previously, you could not be able to do that. Mm -hmm. You could not be able to do that. You can have meetings, mm -hmm. you can have online meetings. Mm -hmm. You can have Teams meeting, you mm -hmm. can have Zoom meeting. Right now we are talking about uh, Peter, our colleague, the sales area manager. Mm -hmm. we, we, because we, we were able to, we, we, were sub, we were supposed to speak to him. And we are only able to speak to him because now we have sufficient capacity, mm -hmm. yeah. sufficient bandwidth to be able to, 
to communicate. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so those are some of the benefits mm -hmm. that the people of Turkana oh, are now going to see uh, yes. after the communication has been made better. Mm -hmm. And of course, connecting them to the, uh, the other part of the country. Now, mm -hmm. maybe they will now start saying they are Kenyans. Exactly. Uh, they are not mm -hmm. from yeah. Turkana. Mm -hmm. But now, um, under all these circumstances and all these challenges that you people underwent during the project, mm -hmm. what kept you going? What motivated you? David. Thank you. For us, uh, we s anytime that we see a life transformed, for us that's a big thing. And if we can be able to make a difference in somebody's life and we see the youth there, some of them, I, I remember going to a, a Trukana sometimes in 2007, 2008. Mm -hmm. And the place by then you could see them running around and trying to search for a place, asking you whether they've ever seen a phone, you have a phone, a different one from what they have seen people coming with. Mm -hmm. And for now, if you go there, you actually see a couple of kids, youth, and many pam old people within the community holding phones mm -hmm. and standing somewhere, and you can actually see them trying to transact. If you see them that they can actually be able to, you can cross that divide where you can be able to give them access to information. Mm -hmm. You enable them to connect them in terms of being able to access banking system, all the services that we provide, mm -hmm. and then make their life going where they can create opportunities around those particular mm -hmm. access to communication, which a lot of opportunities exist. That for us is one of the big things that keeps us going. Mm -hmm. And any time that I used to go to Kakuma also, Kakuma has also been one of the our biggest customers and very demanding because they have a very unique challenge and they have got kids who are there people who are there who are refugees, they have to get access to a couple of content, they have to be educated online and so forth, and they struggle mm -hmm. to hold virtual classes. You could see them struggling and they get very happy and excited. When kids stand in front of a big, a big TV and they're seeing people across different worlds, they get excited and some of them say, one day I would want to be like this. Mm -hmm. For us, that's a big hope. Wonderful. If we can be able to work with those people mm -hmm. in those marginalized areas, like those ones and give them access and also education, so that they can also be empowered and can be able to also mine the value that come with the ICT. Mm -hmm. That keeps us going and that is actually one of the things that made us to continuously struggle through the challenges of COVID and so forth mm -hmm. until we ensure that they actually have access to very high speed mm -hmm. internet. All right. Now, Paul, you mentioned of the challenges and you spoke of the people they are needing the job. But you as a team, I'm just speaking to the two of you. I'm sure you, you are not just two, it was a team, but you're the people who saw the project go through. Yes. What set of skills <coughs> did you people have that you felt even these people and by the way when you're coming back? Did you uh, mentor some guys there? Did you show them uh, some of the skills that you have? So what did you combine, bring together and make the project successful? Uh, Hillary, when we went to Turkana, the first time, we did what we call the community engage engagement, mm -hmm. where we were able to get hold of the, the people who live around the, the corridor where we are working, mm -hmm. and then we spoke to them, and we had to make them understand the value of what we were, we were doing. Mm -hmm. And usually when you are carrying out a project of that magnitude, mm -hmm. the locals are stakeholders. Okay. So you have to engage them. And uh, I want to tell you, Hillary, Tukana was a bit different because this type of infrastructure was unique to them. Mm -hmm. So it was only fair that we sit them down and explain to them what we are doing. Mm -hmm. So at the same time, when we go to a place to work, we have a way of designing the project to accommodate the locals mm -hmm. to be able to work. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the skill sets that we required for, for so that, uh, number one, so that we have buy-in from the community, and number two, so that they can also feel like they are part of, the, of this project, we were able to get some of the youths who are, because at that time some of them were not in school. Right. And uh, we were able to engage some of them as supervisors. Supervisor, we explained to them how it could be done. Mm -hmm. Some of them could fetch, uh, could assist to look around mm -hmm. for probably things like uh, 
like a uh, first aid mm -hmm. you know things that are not so taxing right. in terms of uh, like you see on the on the corridor where you're working you need to protect it you need to barricade it yeah so skills that were the, th uh, things that don't require specialized skills mm -hmm. we could be able to assign them right but as we progress towards Lodwa and towards Kakuma, I think the community un appreciated the fact that uh, there are some skill sets that are supposed to be developed mm -hmm. so that they can be able to do some jobs. Right. So that's what I'm able to, I'm able to say. Mm -hmm. But those, uh, those areas that did not require a lot of specialized skills mm -hmm. were able to, to allow the community to, to do them. Yeah, j just a quick one. Um, how was the reception by these youth, uh, engaging them to these um, noble tasks when, when you gave them? Yes, at first, you know, I want to tell you, Hilary, that uh, we, we had different uh, contractors doing the job for us. Mm -hmm. the, we have uh, contractors who went in mm -hmm. without uh, doing their bit of engagement, mm -hmm. and there was a, a crash. A, a bit of the <laughs> tension a bit. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. But uh, the other conductors having learned what happened, mm -hmm. they learned from it and we have photos, we have photos in our, with us. Actually, showing uh, we, we should be seeing mm -hmm. them right now. Y yes. Uh, I'm hoping my, my director would be playing them. Yes. Uh, we have photos with us showing us sitting down with the, mm -hmm. With the, with the community, we're talking about the project. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you the reception from there became very good. Mm -hmm. In fact, we were thinking the issue of security was going to be there. Mm -hmm. I can tell you we deliver this project without any security issue. In mm -hmm. fact, we are not going to mention security here as a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> we, right. Would yes. you want to weigh into that? Yeah, just mm -hmm. to add off that, you know, there's always a very thin line between uh, doing a project mm -hmm. in an area mm -hmm. and pulling, uh, moving with people along. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest in that area is that you come in and they're seeing you working. Mm -hmm. Firstly, they will want to know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And secondly, because of the challenges that all of us are facing, they will want also to be part and parcel of it. Mm -hmm. So that positive tension that is always there, or sometimes go to the extreme, mm -hmm. but if well managed in terms of working with the community, trying to engage them prior to explaining to them. In fact, one of the biggest challenges that we had with the community is that they saw this is just a trench, you can go inside a trench and this is what pe these people are doing. But if you understand the nature of that area in terms of the climate, mm -hmm. temperatures goes past 36, 37 and so yes. forth. Mm -hmm. It gets too hot. If you are to engage somebody to give you a sufficient output so that you can still keep within, work within your timeline, mm -hmm. you'll never finish a project. Mm -hmm. So you have to balance and try mm -hmm. to also explain to them the very reason why we are going for this particular part to be mechanized is because this machine can work technically 24-7 with light. Right. Yes, once you have the places well lit, it can work technically 27, mm -hmm. uh, uh, 24 hours, mm -hmm. 7 days. But as a human being, you won't. And also when there's a lot of sun, when there's a lot, it's too hot, people get it dehydrated, so you cannot be mm -hmm. able to perform. And you have to struggle actually trying to Mm. make them to be hydrated for them to continue performing. Mm -hmm. So we really had to work with them and explain to them, we still engage you. Mm -hmm. They are part of this project that definitely we cannot mechanize. Mm -hmm. But where we see this value of mechanizing, because we still also have to keep our focus in terms of providing access to you, mm -hmm. to, to information within this preferred date. Right. And that balance is what we had to struggle with. The community, village elders, chiefs, and so forth, mm -hmm. until they embrace the project. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. going along, they saw what we are trying to do. They saw how much we're engaging community to do some other jobs, like ensuring they lay the ducks, they return, they do backfilling or returning the soil and helping us to pull the fiber all through. Mm -hmm. They were able to participate in that by virtue that they're actually seeing mm -hmm. how great the machine was working, breaking rocks that they could not break. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, Paul, uh, through the challenges, I, I still want to get there because uh, there comes in uh, something to do with communication and how you relate with people. When you are moving uh, from Nairobi, uh, just like you mentioned, you are from Kenya and they are true canners. <laughs> so other than the skills, being the expert, other than the skills that you had, yes. 
what, how else were you prepared knowing you're going to a known a region people do not know you they view you as someone else or coming from somewhere else how else were you prepared in terms of engaging the community and in terms of uh, even uh, trying to tell them uh, this is what we're doing and this is what will benefit you um the preparedness for delivering this process started right from from our offices mm -hmm. we had several meetings with the with the contractors who are going to deliver for us mm -hmm. several meetings we planned very many meetings to of, because we said we are going in a very unique environment mm -hmm. so we prepared by we started with the meetings in the office mm -hmm by speaking to the contractors and letting, let, letting them know the uniqueness of the area. Mm -hmm. Now, apart from the meetings in the office, we also had uh, an opportunity to speak to the, to, to the stakeholders on the ground, the county government of Tukana. Mm -hmm. And the first time we had an encounter with them was during the, during the surveys. During the surveys, we commissioned a contractor to do to run all the way from uh, from Kapenguria mm -hmm. to Tarquel, Kainuk, Lokichar, Lodwa to Kakuma. Mm -hmm. And as they were doing all that, there was an interaction with the with the community. And they knew what was coming. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now apart from that, uh, in, uh, in 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 the part of part of uh, Pokot because because you must understand, we are talking about the journey, mm, yeah, and yeah, we cannot yeah. talk about this journey without mentioning Other where countries. we began. Mm -hmm. Because we, we must talk about Kapenguria, we must talk about Tarquel, we must talk about Kainuk. That part is part of uh, West Pokot. Mm -hmm. The tribal crashes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And now, as, we, as that engagement was happening, so that now we... we by the time these reports came, in West Pokot they said, we are not going to charge you for way lifts because usually when you excavate, mm. there are charges that you must <coughs> pay. But they said, we are not going to charge you as much, mm -hmm. but our locals have to work. Okay. So now you can see that uh, we are preparing the mm -hmm. ground mm -hmm. so that even if there was something that was to be of a concern, by the time you get there, things, were uh, things there are a bit age. soft for you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So when we went to, when we went to, to Kana County in the beginning, I think they have uh, an issue of funny gazette rate. Mm -hmm. But later on, after speaking to them, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you will talk about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. The rates came down mm -hmm. and they were very supportive. Mm -hmm. So we can say, we, there's a way we did, the, from the county government mm -hmm. and ourselves on the ground. Okay. The county government, there's a way they, they played their part mm -hmm. and they, they had an oversight a bit. Mm -hmm. And then ourselves with the locals, mm -hmm. we had a sit down with them and we had a smooth mm -hmm. delivery of the project. Mm -hmm. David, how was the negotiations? Mm -hmm. It's always a tough, a tough one, especially mm -hmm. for the, and I would understand where the counties come from, you know, the counties also look at anything that is going on, firstly from the face value, without looking at the total benefit. Mm -hmm. And for them, they see that opportunity to do what we call the revenue collection, because mm -hmm. they also hard pressed to ensure mm -hmm. that they collect money en enough so that they can sustain themselves. So it was a lot of push and pull just to ensure that uh, these counties, first of all, mm -hmm. we explain to them the benefit of this, mm -hmm. and also to try to make them realize that Charging exorbitant fee in terms of right of way or access mm -hmm. is actually more of an impediment rather than an enabler. Mm -hmm. We are coming to work with you in this county mm -hmm. to ensure that we open up the, and give people opportunity to access information. Mm -hmm. But then if you put for us exorbitant charges like 1,000 per meter for you to be able to use a right of way, then the projects, already the projects are the negative because if you look at the cost benefits, you're already on the negative. Mm -hmm. If you add the impact of what you need to pay back again to pay the county, mm -hmm. you will never be able to do that project. You can always walk away and say it is easier for you to walk away. Mm -hmm. But then with the push and pull and just explaining to them to appreciate 
the total benefit that will actually go to the community and them at large. Mm -hmm. After a period of time, some of them now started understanding where we're coming from and why we must do it. Mm -hmm. And the sacrifices we are making to make them a better county. Mm -hmm. And then they relaxed it to the extent where it was almost nil. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it was after almost a couple of weeks, almost three weeks or so, yeah. of push and pull. <laughs> Reminds me of the uh, tussles between our governors and the uh, products that come through. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had issues from Kitui and the... Uh, um, charcoal we've had also water yes, from exactly. Moranga coming mm -hmm. to Nairobi exactly. so these people mm -hmm. have been mm -hmm. have been fighting so it's mm -hmm. something that has been going on yes. and um, it's good to know that you are able to mm -hmm. uh, negotiate and uh, bring uh, some sanity mm -hmm. but now um, you are doing this work during COVID-19 yes. other than the curfew and the mm -hmm. other restrictions Paul mm -hmm. what else how else did COVID-19 impact your project? Um, Hillary COVID-19 impacted us in a big way because usually it's called uh, OHS, Occupational Health and Safety. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, one, it's, it, it's one of the main consideration mm -hmm. during our project execution. Mm -hmm. Already before COVID, we were feeling uh, OHS was... Uh, OHS was increasing our, our cost of delivering the project. Mm -hmm. OHS. Mm -hmm. You make sure you have gumboots, you make sure you have an apron, you make sure you have the helmet, you make sure you have the... P the and it's too hot. You, you make sure you have the, the reflector. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, when COVID kicked in, mm -hmm. You have to ensure now, now that uh, you, have a, you have a thermal gun. Mm -hmm. you, have, uh, you need to have the sanitizer. Mm -hmm. You need to have the mask. Mm -hmm. Now you can imagine. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the cost of the project, in a way, mm -hmm. went up. Okay. That's in terms of cost. It's only cost. Mm -hmm. Because now we have to make arrangements over how our people in the field mm -hmm. are well protected. And uh, I told you this project was mechanized for two reasons. Number one, the terrain over there. Mm -hmm. The terrain there allowed us to, to mechanize because we do not have so many underground infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And number two, the, 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 the heat over there, so we do not have so many people. And number three, mm -hmm. we, did not have, we did not want to have so, so many casuals working in a region because COVID had come in. Okay. Okay? Right. So COVID escalated our cost of delivery. Mm -hmm. But again, in terms of time, in terms of logistics, you know materials were coming from Nairobi. Right. And when these materials come from Nairobi, you ha number one, you have to, we, we had to prepare letters for each and every resource that was going to, to Lodwa. Okay. We had letters done for them. Number two, in between, for you were to in an area where you could use uh, one day to to access mm -hmm. one or two days, we are using about four days to reach Lodwa. There are so many roadblocks on the way, mm -hmm. and each time you go to a roadblock, you are to alight, you are to show papers. Mm -hmm. You a gun was to uh, the thermal gun had with the temperature. Your temperature has had to be taken. Mm -hmm. You your conducts had to be put down for conduct tracing if anything was to happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were so many of those roadblocks. I don't. I cannot remember how many times I <laughs> I alighted <laughs> to be able to go through that. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine the impact of COVID. It's a huge impact. All right. As, uh, finally, as we finish, how long did the uh, project take? Mm -hmm. And was this your major project, you could say? Mm -hmm. Finally. Yes, thank <laughs> you. So the project uh, took uh, six months. That's from December mm -hmm. to around um, uh, June. Mm -hmm. And with all those challenges, so you can see we just, uh, by the time the restrictions for COVID came, we are midway. Mm -hmm. We just midway, and then we had to battle to still ensure that we finish within time. Okay. Yes, and uh, that was one of the challenges that, as he told you, we had anticipated it would take much shorter, but with the struggles and a lot of adjustment we had to do, mm -hmm. we ended up actually taking that long. 
Secondly, in terms of uh, the challenges, uh, it, uh, Trokana is a bit unique. Let me say each and every project is unique. Mm -hmm. Today we have uh, over 9,000 kilometers of fiber laid across uh, mm -hmm. and almost about 1,800 in mm -hmm. northern Kenya, which is also part of when you go to the other Dabas, you go to Mudo to Habaswen and then you go Wajia and Moyale. Mm -hmm. The uniqueness of the northern corridor and the entire north part of it is just special. They are special. Mm -hmm. Ethiopia, maybe the part of the, when you go to us, Ethiopia, that is Moyale and so forth, they also have their own challenges that we met. Mm -hmm. But for this par particular project, which is more, which was in Trukana, the biggest thing was uh, the period that we are doing it, which was itself unique. Mm -hmm. Then, the infrastructure there was a little bit, in fact, for in terms of meeting those flash flood, very extreme was that is the only place where you get blocked in a place and get cut out for 14 hours. Mm -hmm. And you have yes. to wait, you wait sleep mm -hmm. there, you know, waiting for 14 hours for you to, for water to subside so that you can cross. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you wake up, but you never know where you're going to sleep, which is mm -hmm. unique to Tukana. It is not anywhere else. Mm -hmm. okay. So it's a very challenging project, but very nice for you. Once you deliver it, you can always look back mm -hmm. and you say that at least we have made a difference. All right. Yes. I, I, I want your final comments mm -hmm. uh, as regards to internet and technology mm -hmm. and opening up of mm -hmm. Trukana or mm -hmm. the northeastern part of Kenya mm -hmm. to the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. Final comments. I'll begin with you, Paul. Uh, final comments. I, in terms of connectivity in Kenya, I think we, we, we are doing quite well. Mm -hmm. uh, by far, Safaricom itself has the largest network, mm -hmm. about 9,000 kilometers. Mm -hmm. And when you look at other players in the space, there are quite, there are quite a number. Mm -hmm. uh, quite a number who are doing fiber. Uh, we have uh, JTL, we have Liquid, we have, uh, we have NOFB1, NOFB2, NOFB2E. We have Ketraco, we have K uh, Kenya Pipeline Corporation, mm -hmm. we have Kenya Power. All those are players who are doing fiber. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, this one, this is meant to enhance connectivity here in Kenya. Uh, as I said, Safaricom by far the largest. We are in every town. We are in every metro. We are in Nairobi. Any town in Kenya you can imagine. Mm -hmm. Turkana County was the last county for us to, to connect. Otherwise, we are in we are in all the 47 counties. Okay. So in terms of, in terms of connectivity, mm -hmm. we are, we, as a country, we are doing very well. And uh, the reason why we have the largest, uh, we, have, we have a lot of, we put in a lot of capex, is so that we are able to transform the lives of many people. Okay. Thank you very much. I don't know whether I will have an opportunity to thank uh, the colleagues that who worked with us in this journey. Mm. But uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank <laughs> yeah. Safaricom for providing uh, the, the capital to be able to lay the, the cable. Mm -hmm. Elio Dera, our HOD, James Njuguna, mm -hmm. uh, David Rotich, we have Arato, mm -hmm. our TX planner. Mm -hmm. We have Eno Kimgetich, we have Cornelia Scuto, mm -hmm. we have James Langat, we have Shadrach Barusei, mm -hmm. we have Joseph Nganga. We have a host of people, mm -hmm. Kate Maina, mm -hmm. we accepted the project together, a host of people who, who participated and we worked together in this journey. Mm -hmm. right. And I will also want to thank them so much for making sure that we deliver this project for the people of Tukana. Mm -hmm. The customer is king. We are notoriously obsessed uh, with the customer. <laughs> okay. And we want to thank you, Hilary, for, for having us. Welcome. Thank you. 30 seconds. Yes, yes. For me, as a country today, if you look at our national broadband policy, mm -hmm. they are 2018 to 2023, mm -hmm. uh, within there's a what we call definition of broadband, which is anything beyond two megabits per second. Mm -hmm. When you're providing quality, affordable internet, which is a speed of two megabits per second. In terms of that, how we do as a country, we are currently around 44%. We still have that particular 56 to go. Mm -hmm. We need to work in, on the supply side. Supply side of it is ensuring that we continuously invest to ensure, continuously mm -hmm. invest in terms of uh, coverage and also in terms of the right technology so that we can be able to access. Mm -hmm. On the demand part of it also, we need to work on what we call the latent demand, of which demand is first of all about awareness. How do we create awareness so that communities can embrace 
and with the new things that are coming up, new learning and so forth, then attractiveness, mm -hmm. how do we continually c create content and repackage internet to be a way of life okay. and unlock opportunity? And then finally, affordability. How do we make the devices and also internet affordable so that many people can join the digital journey? Mm. If we do that as a country, we'll be able to cross the bridge and we'll be able to actually make our economy to be a digital economy much more better than today where we are. All right. Thank you so much, Thank gentlemen, you. for coming and trying to tell us how the journey was uh, to open up and Trukana County to the rest of the world as far as communication is of concern. They have been my guest, Paul Barasa. He's a project manager and David Odiambo, senior uh, manager, transport and IP planning. I'll be coming up next with health interview. We'll be looking into non-communicable diseases and how they are faring during this COVID-19, the misses and hits as far as uh, health is of concern. Keep it Y254. Thank you so much for keeping us company. My name is Edereva Hilewi. Good morning. See you in a bit.